Hi, this is Kurt Gowdy. So you're thinking about it's not an easy thing to do. You have to be rugged, you've got to be an individual, but most of all, you must take your individuality and be willing to meld it with a group of other young men into a team winner. That's what the 1976 Cowboys have done. They have overcome odds that would make others squeamish by producing one of the most remarkable turnarounds in NCAA collegiate football history. This group of gutty performers won two and lost nine in 1975. And they've gone from that to the Western Athletic Conference Co-Championship, eight wins and three losses, and a spot in the Fiesta Bowl. And it did all that in the most incredible and heart-stopping way. It has brought winning football back to a marvelous university where winning has been a tradition. Yes, these young men have made 1976 a cowboy fiesta. Two individuals who've dissolved their immense football talents into a dedicated team effort have been Wyoming's wily wishbone operators, Mark Cousins and Don Clayton. Cousins, number 11, is a remarkable story. Considered a backup performer at best coming into the 1976 season, the sophomore from Littleton, Colorado, came in for an injured Don Clayton in the second quarter of the fourth game. He went on to lead the Cowboys in total offense and scoring. Because of injury, Clayton did not have the kind of season he would have liked. When called upon, number 13 demonstrated a gutty individuality that permeated through the entire squad. Forced to play hurt in Wyoming's key battle with Arizona, Clayton led the Pokes to an important victory. Fred Akers, the Western Athletic Conference Coach of the Year, comments on his two prize quarterbacks. You know, we're real fortunate this year in having two really fine competitors at quarterback. Two young men that are alike in many ways, but on the football field so unlike, it's, it's almost unreal. Don Clayton is a sturdy, stout competitor at quarterback, strong, determined, plays under pressure well, really well. And just like him as a sophomore, Mark Cousins is a, like a wild hare. You never know what's going to happen when he's in the game, has the ability to turn nothing into a great deal. Again, a very tough competitor and quite a physical football player. I think any coach would enjoy having two quarterbacks like Clayton and Cousins. Either one can come off the bench and turn a football game around. Either one is going to be there when you need them. It's a pleasure to coach them. Another key member of Wyoming's wishbone backfield is senior Robbie Wright, number 43. Wright, a halfback for two years, moved to fullback for the 1976 season and was nothing short of sensational. The world's smallest fullback, he weighs just 180 pounds and stands 5'10", gained over 700 yards to lead the Cowboys in rushing. He also had five touchdowns and four pass receptions. His 144 yards rushing and two touchdowns in the Arizona win gave the Pokes a big boost in their championship quest. And when it was all said and done, this Newark, New Jersey native fell just 17 yards short of Wyoming's all-time career rushing record. His ruggedness is typically a cowboy trait. Remarkable was the only way to describe Wyoming's offensive line during this cowboy fiesta. Two members of the very proud Department of Interior, offensive tackle Dennis Baker, number 72, and tight end Walter Howard, number 85, were honored by being selected to the All-Western Athletic Conference first team. Baker, who possesses the quickness, strength, and mobility that the pros look for, was named to the honor team for the second consecutive season. He returns in 77 for what should be a great senior year. Howard led the Cowboys in pass receptions, converting three into touchdowns. This junior out of Detroit, Michigan, is probably the Cowboys' best athlete and has nothing but bright futures ahead of him. Number 59, Ray Davies. One of the four Polk captains missed the All-Western Athletic Conference stellar team by one vote, but still is regarded as one of Wyoming's finest centers of all time. The Cowboys' other offensive captain is guard Steve Edwards, number 60, 
overcame injury problems early in his career to finish with a super senior season. As films revealed, he graded consistently high throughout the season. Yes, thanks to these individuals and a host of others, Wyoming's offense was indeed exciting, potent, averaging nearly 25 points a game, and opportunistic in 1976. It scored some 22 times after the Polk defense forced an opponent's mistake. It set a Wyoming team rushing record and remained atop the WAC stat sheets throughout the season. It was a ground-oriented wishbone with a flare for the air, scoring 10 times via the pass. It certainly reflected the personality of its coach, Fred Akers. Young, aggressive, and a winner. fans believe there's only one way to play defense, viciously. And that's what their beloved cowboy maulers did with abandon. At times, the pokes were overpowering. At times, they bent. But as their whack crown attests, they never broke. On 12 separate occasions, this young group, which loses just two senior starters, stopped opponents within its 15-yard line without a score. Wyoming people love defense, and they love the 1976 cowboy version. Talk about your cowboy defense, and you have to talk about senior captain Paul Nunu, number 91, the cruncher from Hawaii, was one of the major reasons for Wyoming's defensive success. His list of honors was long and well-deserved. Named to several All-American teams, Nunu's highest honor was being named Western Athletic Conference Lineman of the Year. The Pope's Hawaiian punch led his team in defensive points, was twice named WAC Defensive Player of the Week, and was Associated Press National Lineman of the Week for his performance against New Mexico. Nunu had played in the defensive interior for two seasons prior to 1976, but the Wyoming coaching staff felt it needed a strong leader at middle linebacker. Enter Mr. Nunu, a tougher, more consistent football player has yet to be built. Anything anybody does has to come from the heart or there is little chance of success says the other Cowboy defensive captain, Kevin McLean. And that's just the way McLean has played safety for Wyoming's defensive secondary with an intense desire to succeed. Number 36 may be one of the Polk's guttiest performers ever. At various times during the season, he played with two broken down shoulders, a bad ankle, a bruised lower back, and a fractured hand. Yet he missed just two quarters of one game and three of another. The coaching staff couldn't keep him out. McLean's fierce competitive spirit and football instinct earned him a well-deserved spot in the all whack defensive secondary. Many thought the 208 pounds next to defensive tackle raised to Wise name in the football program was a typographical error. It wasn't. Probably the smallest tackle in the league, number 61 had to be the quickest. After the season he turned in, all conference recognition was a foregone conclusion. He was among Wyoming's top defenders in defensive points. Included in his totals were nine tackles for losses. His tremendous quickness left many an offensive lineman believing in ghosts. Wyoming's leader in sacking the quarterback was defensive end Francis Chesley. A walk-on who came to Wyoming to play baseball, the Washington, D.C. native made terrorizing quarterbacks a hobby. Big number 89 was one of the major factors in the tremendous improvement of Wyoming's defensive end play. Look out, quarterbacks. This one will be back to sack for another year.
The Pokes' march to the Fiesta will go down to Western Athletic Conference annals as one of the most incredible ever. Predicted to finish sixth or seventh in preseason polls, the Cowboys won six of seven games on their way to the 76 Fiesta Bowl. In five of those games, they were rated as underdogs. Excellent coaching, fierce pride, an ability to turn critical situations in their favor, and guts, one for the Cowboys. They didn't overpower anyone, they just beat them. Fred Akers talks about the season. You know, when we started the season this year, we had a field full of bright-eyed young men with, with lofty goals and a lot of energy, and we just weren't sure how far it was going to take us. We knew we'd be improved, and we proved that in a fashion in our early season games. Then we hit our conference schedule, and we played the defending champions, Arizona State. I think the Arizona State game meant more to us as far as getting our season going than any other single game that we played. And it wasn't just this, this football game. It was the game we played last year, the year before, when they defeated us 21 to 20 in Arizona. We knew then that we could compete with them, that we could beat them, and we were looking forward to having them on our own home field. In that football game, it was a game of big plays, both on the part of Arizona State and Wyoming. We had the edge and big plays, two long touchdown passes, one from Mark Cousins to uh, John Arnold. That was a spectacular catch and run. And then late in the game when we were behind, Bob Davis on the halfback pass again to Arnold made a super play. I think at that time, the best we could say about our football team was that we were determined and we wanted to win. Then we played a couple other games and I think the most prominent of the two was BYU. A very volatile, explosive team capable of scoring a lot of points with a great defense. And when we defeated them and defeated them convincingly, I think that our whole character changed. We went from wanting to win to expecting to win. And I think that we took this out on the rest of our conference opponents. There were some great plays. We had blocked punts. We'd have interceptions at key times. We would have long runs. We would have key blocks for short runs on short yardage situations. And I'll never forget that blocked punt against New Mexico by Mark Tellis that was covered in the end zone for a defensive score. Because that, to me, represents our kind of football. Reckless, uh, opportunistic. Big play football. Some of Wyoming's most outstanding cowboys of all time are still carrying their collegiate banner in their professional ranks. Aaron Kyle. The Dallas Cowboys' number one draft pick after his 1975 senior season has done an excellent job in his rookie year. Kyle is one of Wyoming's all-time great safeties. Another first-round draft choice from the 1975 Wyoming team is fullback Lawrence Gaines, now chewing up yardage for the Detroit Lions. The big freight train was a perfect wishbone fullback and earned all-conference honors. Possibly the most famous of the Wyoming alumni knocks people down for the St. Louis Cardinals. Offensive guard Conrad Dobler, immortalized by Alex Karras on Monday Night Football. He played offensive and defensive tackle for the Pokes from 1969 and 1971. These and many others carry Wyoming pride wherever they go. Yes, it's something special to be a Wyoming cowboy. Of course, it's not easy. Nothing worth sacrificing for ever is. The 1976 Wyoming Cowboys had a season that will be long remembered, one that made the hours of work and sacrifice well worth it. Come join us for your Cowboy Fiesta. <laughs>